Today, we start off at the old loading dock, and while I was checking the signals, I noticed some bright lights down the line, but it wasn't a train. It was two maintenance away vehicles slowly rolling down the tracks. After a few minutes, they finally made it over to where I was. This first one looks like a ballast spreader, and it's used to shape the roadbed of the tracks. The driver of the second mile vehicle was nice enough to give a fellow rail fan a horn salute. You can see him right here standing by the tracks. This vehicle looks like it's used to adjust the track ties that sit under the rails. It uses metal rods to grab the ties, and if I'm not mistaken, it can move them in all directions. Once a mile had reached the end of the siding, they sat there for the rest of the evening, even with trains passing on the adjacent track. Speaking of trains, we see our first one of the evening. It's a loaded ethanol train with an H1-9 in second. To make things even better, the DPU on this train was a Norfolk Southern Jeevo. One day later, we find ourselves in the exact same spot, with a southbound cold drag fast approaching. The engineer even gave a horn salute and a wave. The DPU on this was also foreign power, in the form of a KCS Ace. Up next was the southbound mix freight. At the very end of the train, there was one of those neat boxcars with two yellow stripes. The reporting marks on this car were TOE, which stands for the Texas, Oklahoma, and Eastern Railroad Company. I think it's pretty cool that a little short line like this has its own paint scheme for its boxcars, and it's a recognizable one too. This next train had a pretty neat engine on it. It was a repainted H1-9, number 1123. I've seen repainted war bonnets and blue bonnets, but never a repainted H1 engine before. I've got to say, I kind of like the H3 paint scheme on Dash 9s. Then, the signals came on for another northbound. This was a Speedy Z train with a BNSF war bonnet and another H1-9. This is the kind of lash up you'd see in the early years of BNSF, minus a Jeevo. Now we see another northbound mix freight with a seven engine power move up front and a KCS Thunder Cab right smack in the middle. The reason the KCS Ace is referred to as a Thunder Cab is because the cab is not isolated from the rest of the locomotive which creates a noisy ride for the crew inside. The noise is so bad, in fact, that BNSF banned Thunder Cabs from leading trains when Aces first came out, and that ban is still in place today. Out of the corner of my eye, 
I saw that the mouth from yesterday was parked on a nearby spur, so I decided to go over there and get a better look at the vehicles. Here's a track tie adjuster. This is the mechanism that does most of the work. It's almost hard to see what's going on with all the hydraulic lines going everywhere and all the different components, but down at the very bottom you can see the metal spikes that are used to move the track ties. This is a ballast spreader. It's far less complex than the tie adjuster. You can see on the sides where it has lowerable blades for shaping the sides of the roadbed, and in the front you can see blades for shaping the top of the roadbed with a cutout for the rail. A few days later, we move over to the old depot to catch a northbound grainer. Empty grainers usually only need one or two engines because the cars are so light. It would be a waste of fuel to use more than two or three locomotives on these trains. After that, we move up to a bridge, where we catch a northbound intermodal. The last engine in the lash up is one that's rather special. It's BNSF 1050, which I like to call the Proto Golden Swoosh. It's an H1-9, and instead of having black lettering on the long hood, it has gold lettering. It's the only locomotive to have a paint scheme like this. Truly one of a kind. Once that train was gone, I decided to call it a day. Thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video, consider checking out some other ones of mine. Till next time.